Well, we want to welcome each and every one of you coming here for our Ash Wednesday service, and those will be joining us online as well. We will be live streaming tonight. Uh, depending on your tradition or background, maybe you've never been to an Ash Wednesday service, or maybe you have, uh, we'll probably do it a little different than your tradition. Uh, or if you've never been to an Ash Wednesday service, then this will be your first. Whatever we do it will be great, right? And, but we, uh, it'll be unique for Faith Community Church, something I feel the Lord's leading us into. And we did this last year as well. And, uh, if you've been watching the news today, you've probably seen newscasters with crosses on their head. That means they've been to an Ash Wednesday service, right? And that's a tradition. Here, we take our ashes and we'll uh, put them in a jar. This is from last year. And we put them in the prayer room all year. And we see this, it reminds us of what happened here tonight. This will be the beginning of a 40-day journey. You say, well, wait, there's more than 40 days till Easter, isn't there? Yeah, we don't count Sundays, because those are going to be feast days, all right? But uh, we, we're looking forward to this journey. It will be unique for each and every one of us. And we're going to begin our time first with a little worship, but let me pray with you. Father, we thank you that we could gather here tonight as we prepare ourselves for the greatest celebration for the greatest event that ever happened on planet earth the death burial and resurrection of your son and the implication for each and every one of us and the new life that we celebrate because of this and lord tonight this is a special special time as we gather and prepare ourselves to walk this journey of 40 days i believe there's something unique and different you want to do in each and every one of us so prepare us for this journey tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Join us as we lift up worship to our Father and to his Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand, please. Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. I want thee forever to live in my soul. Break down every idol, cast out every foe. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. Yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, for this I must humbly entreat. I wait, blessed Lord, at thy crucified feet. By faith for my cleansing I see thy blood flow. Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, thou seest thy patiently wait. Now come and within me a new heart create. To those who have sought thee, thou never says no. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. What love could remember no wrongs we have done? 
Omniscient, all-knowing, he counts not their sum. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. What patience could wait as we constantly roam? What Father so tender is calling us home? He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. What riches of kindness he lavished on us. His blood was the payment, his life was the cost. He stood neath a debt we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. The Lord. His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more, stronger darkness new every morn our sins they are many his mercy is more our sins they are many his mercy is Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne. Crown you now many crowns you reign victorious high and lifted up Jesus Son of God the King of heaven crucified worthy is the Lamb cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne. Crown you now. Many crowns you reign. 
reign victorious, high and lifted up, Jesus, Son of God, the King of heaven crucified, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Father, thank you. As we enter into a time where we remember, but we don't just remember, we look forward. We're looking forward as we look towards the cross, the cross where Jesus died for us, where his blood was shed, where his body was broken. Lord, I pray that we would take it seriously that we'd understand how much you gave for us. Thank you for giving your only begotten Son. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Lent. A season of reflection, re-evaluation, new beginnings. A time to recognize God's grace in our lives, to find ways to let that realization sink in and take root, drawing closer to God as we are changed by His love. In this season, we should give, give of ourselves, our time, money, possessions. Giving helps us to see better the needs of those around us, It brings to light those things that may have too high a priority in our lives. It helps us to separate what we need from what we want, stripping away the things that keep us separated from one another and God. We should fast. It helps us to be reminded of the need for God to fill us, whether food or social media, your phone or computer. Fasting allows us to physically feel the ongoing spiritual needs of the soul helps us to see the truth that only God can truly satisfy. We should pray. It slows us down, focuses us on God. It enables us to be pulled away from our grip on the world and everything we think it can give us and moves us closer to seeing God in the midst of it all. God is inviting us into this holy season, wanting us to be free from all the obstacles that keep us from His fullness. May we allow ourselves to be stripped down and cleansed so that we may come to understand more powerfully the love of God and be made new in His righteousness and alive in His grace. I think the young people are going to go downstairs now, is that right? Because they're going to do their own personal 
Lenten service together as youth. And so they'll join us at the end. And uh, when we uh, create our ashes, they'll be able to be a part of that. So we appreciate you. Be Thank you, Sean. Appreciate your help in Frank's absence. Praise the Lord. Well, if this is your first year, I'll, I'll give you a little layout of what we're going to do here tonight. I'm going to give you a little Lenten challenge. This will not, this will be a very short service. That means a short message, right? We call it a devotion, devotional, right? All right. So we're going to do that tonight and, and you're going to participate. We have some journals, which we're going to pass out to you in just a moment. And even if you have one from last year, feel free to take another. And we'd like for you over the next 40 days to write in your Lenten journal anything the Lord might speak to you during this time, because I believe you're going to hear some special things on this journey. Uh, in, in your journal, in fact, uh, if we could, let's go ahead and pass these out now, if the elders could come and help me, and they're just going to go down the roll. If you need a pen, if you didn't bring one with you, uh, let them know, and they'll be able to provide a pen for you too, because we want everybody to have a journal. In fact, you're going to write in your first page tonight as we uh, join together. So uh, we'll just go row by row and each one take one. If you want an extra one, that's okay. If you have someone you'd like to share it with, you can do that as well. Inside your journal, you'll also find a couple pieces of paper. One of them we'll refer to a later on. But this little blue paper you're going to write some things on this that may be significant, something you'd like to see happen during these 40 days. Uh, we're going to be thinking about, of course, uh, this, the sins and some of the cares of the world that ensnare us and, and hold us back. Maybe you might want to write something on this paper, something significant you'd like to see happen uh, over this next 40 days. Maybe it's something you want to overcome in your life, whatever it is. Uh, it'll be individual. God will speak to you. I want you to write it on this paper while you're here in this service. And when you leave tonight, and we'll all go out the south door, uh, Kenny and Linda will be out there, and they will have some special candles where you will actually take your paper, you can fold it, and you will light it, burn it, and drop it in the canister. That will There'll be a, a tin can there, and you'll just drop, light it and drop it in there. And then we will fill this jar up with the ashes from this year. We'll put the date on it. This was hard to believe, February 17th, 2021. That was a great year, wasn't it? Glory to God. Uh, what an experience that was. And here's all the ashes that, of the papers that we burned. And again, we will put this in our prayer room. This is a little different maybe from the tradition you've been part of, but we want to remind us all through the year uh, what what this evening was all about. This is the beginning of the journey, so just you just can write on that anytime you want, all right? And in this green paper, we're gonna look at that in a little bit. It has some suggestions as far as what we might do as, as we celebrate Lent. Probably foremost on your mind, especially as Protestants, you probably, when you think of Lent, you think that's a Catholic thing, right? But historically, the first documented mention of the practice was part of the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. We know that gathering because they produce what we know as the Nicene Creed. The Council also produced 20 practical directions, or we know them as canons, and that was for church practices. Lent is the fifth canon in the Nicene Creed. It's not explained, it's just mentioned, which leads me to believe it was just a common practice and everybody knew what it meant. Didn't explain how to do it, which leaves us great liberty, of course. Um, it, I think probably historically, Lent took on many forms in the early church. Lent in the Greek, the Greek word used in the canon meant 40 referred to the 40 days of Jesus' fast. They identified with that. Many of the early churches before the Nicaea Council fasted for two or three days in preparation for the celebration of Easter. Some of the churches at that time, Easter was the day when you had water baptisms. And they, everybody waited all year for Easter 
to be baptized. And one of the practices at that time, of course, was to fast in preparation for the candidates who were going to be water baptized. By the time the, the Council of Nicaea met, many churches had already been extending these fast days to celebrate the 40 days modeled after 40 days of Jesus fasting, which you can read about in Matthew 4. Well, what I'd like to do here before I give you a little challenge is look at what I call fast facts about Lent, all right? It's a little list of things. As we embrace the 40 days of Lent, our purpose at Faith Community Church is going to be to reflect and renew. But here's some facts about Lent that you might find interesting. The English word for Lent comes from an old English word, and it means springtime. Uh, I like to think of Lent I don't know if you ever do this at your house. Do you, have you ever heard of spring cleaning? Yeah, you ever do? Isn't that when you open the windows and you let everything air out? And so I kind of think of that when I think of Lent. I think this is a good time to open the windows and let the air flow through. And just have a refreshing time uh, in your life. Uh, in many languages, the word for Lent is connected to 40, which we talked about. The Bible declares many 40-day fasts. Je of course, Jesus is one, right? Who else did a 40-day fast? Moses did a 40-day fast, right, uh, on Mount Sinai. Of course, Elijah, he did a 40-day fast, and we're going to be looking at him tonight as well. Uh, we, uh, there were other examples of fasting throughout the New Testament. In the 600s AD, Lent began on Sunday, but Gregory the Great moved it to Wednesday, which we know now as Ash Wednesday, and that created then 40 days up until Easter minus Sundays. So all the other days were fast days, but Sunday was a feast day. Gregory the Great was the first to commemorate the beginning of Lent by marking ashes on the heads of worshipers, and this was to remind them of repentance and their mortality. Because of the Council of Nicaea, uh, because it was an ecumenical gathering, it included what we know as Catholics and Protestants. But what happened, of course, like a lot of things, things get distorted over time. And we know that there were some superstitions attached to fasting, and people were... Uh, encouraged to pay penance and those types of things and seek God's favor. And so after the Reformation, Protestants kind of moved away from practicing Lent because of those misuses. But I personally believe that misuse does not mean disuse. It means correction of use, like a lot of things in, in church history and some of our practices. We might uh, over time, things get twisted and turned. All, we're supposed to untwist them, all right? So I think we can still take Lent and practice it under the new covenant, the spirit of grace, and still be able to benefit from this season. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. Uh, kind of in the spirit of Colossians 2, 20, uh, verse 20 and 23, the writer says, and this, this is the spirit we come in, you have died with Christ... And he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. So why do you keep on following the rules of the world, such as don't handle, don't taste, <laughs> don't touch? Such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate as we use them. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion. They require sometimes pious self-denial and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. So in light of that scripture, in the spirit of that scripture, we celebrate Lent uh, under a new covenant spirit of grace. And you know, a few weeks ago, I preached on the power of fasting from a new covenant perspective, and we're going to follow that spirit even over these uh, 40 days as we celebrate Lent. In fact, uh, take your book if you want. Uh, I, I, I want you to, to write in there the word Lent. You didn't think you'd get by without an acrostic, did you? Uh, this is the spirit we'll celebrate Lent in. L, 
liberty, not legalism. It's not a legalistic thing we're going to do, but, it, but it's in a spirit of liberty. E, exchange. We're going to exchange one thing for another. We may, uh, as many do in this practice, we may set something aside in our life. It's not what you set aside that's important. It's what you replace it with. And so we're going to exchange maybe some meal times or, or maybe TV time with something else. All right. In, we're going to say no to the flesh during these 40 days. Because that's something we all wrestle with. The flesh wars against the spirit. The spirit wars against the flesh. It always will be that way. But during Lent, this is a time when we can really become strong. And in fact, if you look at our prayer emphasis for this month, we're focusing on one of the points of fasting is that our flesh would become weaker and our spirit would become stronger. So that's what we want to see happen. And the T, I believe during this 40 days, you will find new traction. You'll get some spiritual traction, maybe even some transformation in your life. Amen? So that's what we're going to do uh, with the whole spirit of, of Lent. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 16, and again, this is the spirit we come to this tradition with. He said, when you fast, notice he didn't say if you fast. So fasting, even from Jesus' perspective, was something that would be expected, right? But he said, here's, here's what he wanted us to understand. He said, don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable, and, and they, they try to, he said, they want everybody to know and admire them for their fasting. He said, don't, don't, do, don't do that. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they'll ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face, then no one will notice that you are fasting except your father who knows what you do in private. And your father who sees everything will reward you. That's the spirit that we're coming uh, to this time of fasting in. And, and you have this little green sheet in your journal. And by the way, if you're watching at home and you'd like to have a Lenten journal and, and you want to participate, all you got to do is call the church office and we'll make sure you get one. I was supposed to have tonight a little 40-day devotional book for you from Guidepost. It's going to be here tomorrow according to UPS. <laughs> so supposed to be here yesterday, didn't make it. So what we're going to do, I'll have them here Sunday. They'll be out in the foyer. And if you attended this service or requested it, you'll pick up your little devotion. It has a little thought for 40 devotions that you can participate in that'll help just kind of be seed devotions for you. Here's a little pamphlet. I think we had this last year. And this is from Village Church. So I just lifted it from them about creative fasting. Maybe you've never fasted before. I've had a lot of questions about that since we've preached on it. Well, what does that look like? Well, here's, here's some examples. And you can switch it up during the 40 days. Of course, what's the obvious, of course, is food. Now, pastor, I always get this question. Well, what, do I skip dinner? Do I skip, you know, again, liberty. We're doing this in liberty. You, you just pray. Uh, personally, I'm going to skip two meals and eat one meal a day. But that's not what's important. What's important is, what am I going to put in its place? See, I'm not really skipping a meal. I'm going to replace it with another meal. I'm going to dine with Jesus. So I'm not skipping a meal at all. I'm just going to set that time aside for reflection and prayer. All right? So you just be creative with that, however that is. Oh, here's one. How about television and movies? Well, that's a, that might be tough for some of you to be able to unplug from that. Uh, say, well, I don't know if I could do that for 40 days. We'll do it for a week and then do something else for another week. How about social networking and internet? My, my son's children were at my house last night, and they really participate in Lent. And they're little, uh, you know, 11, 14 years old, 11 years old, 10 years old. And they said, Grandpa, uh, we, for 40 days, we're eliminating all screen time. I went, you are? Because we're going on a little trip, and they said, and usually Grandma puts little TVs in, in their seats so they can watch. They said, we can't do that. We're, gonna, we're, we're just unplugging from all that. For a kid, that's something. I was like, wow. <laughs> I thought, well, if they could do that, and they, were, they weren't depressed about it. They were kind of 
kind of excited about that this is what they were going to do. Here's one. Come on. Caffeine. <laughs> Caffeine and sweets, huh? Uh, could, you, could you do that? Maybe so. Radio, podcast, music. Here's one. Shopping for non-essentials. You know, just to be able to just get the necessities for that time period and just focus, focus. Sleep. Now, Pastor, you're not asking me to give up sleep, are you? No, I'm not. I'm not asking you to do anything. But you might want to try getting up an hour early and spending some time. Just set your alarm and give up a little bit of that sleep. So these are creative ways that, that you can, you know, you can fast. We'd like, like to encourage you to do that. And just maybe you'll have something that's not even on this list, but you can just stick this in your journal and pray tonight. This is the beginning tonight. What do I want to do as I approach this 40 days? And if you've never, if you've never fasted before, this may be your opportunity to do that. All right? New covenant fasting. What is new covenant fasting? It's not legalistic. That's why we look at the ashes a little different. The ashes remind me that I am mortal. I'm here for a short time. They remind me of repentance. But here's the good part for us. Jesus already on the cross has taken care of everything for me. I don't have to rent my clothes anymore. I don't have to throw ashes on my head. I don't have to do any of that anymore. I get, this has all been, I'm going to celebrate it. And here's what I'm really going to do. You see, I'm, I'm going to find victory over these next 40 days. But here's the key. I'm going to find victory through intimacy. I'm going to find victory through intimacy. Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. The scriptures say that his commandments are not burdensome. Then why is it so hard? I believe the key is intimacy. It's not I have to, it's I want to. And in fact, some of the things you've been trying to get victory over that you might write on your paper tonight. You've struggled and struggled and struggled and struggled. Maybe there's a fresh new approach for you over the next 40 days. You just need to enter into intimacy with the Lord and just get to know him better and, and draw closer to him. On the screen, this is, a, this is a phrase you've probably seen at railroad crossings or places like that. In fact, the railroad company paid $2,500 for this slogan many years ago, but you know it. Can you put it up there, Mike? Stop, look, and listen. You heard that before, haven't you? It's, it's, it's a safety. It was a safety slogan. They were trying to come up with one, and a particular railroad company had a contest. We didn't know where it came from, but someone came up with that. $2,500 was a lot of money back then. But it became a common way, taught in schools, wasn't it? Stop, look, and listen. As I thought about it, I thought, that's what I want to do this Lenten season. I want to stop. I want to look. I want to, I want to listen. Remember, one day someone challenged Jesus with a question, why do your disciples not fast? The Pharisees fast. John the Baptist's disciples fast. But your disciples don't fast. Why? Remember what Jesus said? Well, while the bridegroom's with them, they won't fast. But when the bridegroom's gone, then they will fast. That's the, the key. Do you hear what he's saying? That when he's gone, that's when we, under the new covenant, fast. And it's a, I think it's a, 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 a call to intimacy with him. He's not with us anymore. And so we long for his presence. And this, I think the Lenten season can accomplish that for us. Amen? So I want to encourage you, and I want to share with you one story. And then we're going to spend some time in reflection as we take communion. In 1 Kings 19, familiar story about Elijah. And this is where I thought about this stop, look, and listen. We know the story about Elijah, right? He's defeated the prophets of Baal, and it's quite a, quite a victory. Uh, I don't know about you, but if I would have had that kind of experience, I could have ran on that for a long time. Man, what a show God put on as he licked up all the fire around the altar, all the prophets of Baal were eliminated. And, and then what happens is Elijah's life is threatened. 
And Jezebel says, I'm going to do to you what you did to the prophets by this time tomorrow. Now, if you just had an experience like that, you'd probably go, well, bring it on, wouldn't you? I mean, didn't you see what just happened? But he didn't. He ran for his life. I mean, you know, God is sympathetic with our weakness. He, you know, that we're like that. We're a little fickled sometimes. Well, he, he took off and he ran, and we know he, he ran out into the desert, and we know an angel uh, appeared to him a couple times, woke him up and fed him because he was so depressed. He said, Lord, just take my life right now. You ever felt that way? Suicide by God? Yeah, God, just take me right now. Well, what happens to Elijah? And this is, I think you can have this experience because Elijah goes to a cave. And he went into a cave and he spent the night at that place. He stopped. He stopped his running. He just stopped. He went into the cave and behold, the word of the Lord came to him. He said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? I don't know what the tone of voice was. I don't know. <laughs> I just kind of imagine my mom saying that. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. What are you doing here? So he said, well, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They've torn down your altars and they killed your prophets with the sword and I alone am left and they seek to take my life too. Then he said, go out. Stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire came upon the earth, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in the mantle. He went out and stood in the entrance of the cave, and a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Same question. So he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord, in case you didn't hear me last time. There's, there's, he, he told him everything was wrong, everything that he saw. You tore down the altars. You killed your, they've killed your prof, prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. And the Lord said to him, go and return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and then you will arrive. Anoint Hazael as king over Syria. And then he begins to explain to him all the people that have been preserved that he didn't know anything about. I believe that Elijah's experience can be ours during Lent. Just like a, you may be in a, a bad spot, you may not, but I believe during this 40 days, it's a time to stop, slow down, maybe cut some things out of our life and, and look. Just look around. Sometimes we're so busy, we don't see anything. I think God wants you to see some things during Lent. Elijah saw some stuff, but really what, broke, what really captured Elijah's heart was the still small voice of God. And I believe fasting will accomplish that for us. We can hear God's voice. It's not to twist his arm. It's not to get anything from God. It's to draw near to him. And I love that, I love that still, small, it was a whisper from God. And you know, it's hard to hear a whisper if it's real noisy. I said the other day, I often ask God, Lord, I want to hear from you. Speak to me, Lord. He says, I am speaking, Joe, but you're not listening. So this 40 days is a time for Pastor Joe to listen. And I'd like for you to join me and listen as well. Before we come to the table of communion, I want to, re I want to read one of the scripture to you. And I want you to take time just to reflect as you prepare to come to the table. And, and that's Psalms 51, David's prayer of repentance and reflection I'd, I'd like this to be maybe our hearts as we come to the Lord the Holy Spirit convicts but he does not condemn don't get confused God's not interested in condemning us but he will convict us 
to draw us closer to him in intimacy. So I'd like for Diana to come, if she would, as we prepare uh, to, to come to the table, but reflecting upon these words, have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out all my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. In verse 5, he says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in my inward parts, and in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. I believe what God wants to do during this Lenten season is to deal with us in our inner, inward part. Not the outward, but the inward. Here's our prayer. Make it your prayer. Purge me. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. Who needs that prayer answered in your life? Uh, that's, I think that's the heart of God for us during these 40 days. So I'd like for you, before you come to the table, and Diana's going to play, and she's going to actually play a song that reflects this very scripture, creating me a clean heart, oh God. And I'd like for you to just take a few minutes right where you are before, before we come to the table, this is a time maybe you might want to write on your paper. No one's going to see what you write down. Maybe it's something just the Lord lays on your heart, something you want to see over this 40 days or something you'd like to get victory in over these 40 days or a greater level of intimacy. Whatever it is, whatever, just let God speak to you. Write it on that paper. And then we're going to come and receive the cup and bread and and then we'll receive it together. But let's take a moment just, just to reflect and think about what David wrote. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Make it your prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me create in me a clean heart O oh God and renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And renew a right spirit within me.
Father, we thank you for letting us gather here tonight. But more importantly, we are really thirsty and hungry for these next 40 days and what they might mean in our lives. Lord, we, we want to draw into more intimacy with you. Lord, we want love to be the driving force in our lives that, that we could find our liberty and our freedom not in legalism but in liberty and grace and to become all that you want us to be. I thank you that your commandments are not burdensome and your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And we celebrate that during this season as we prepare, as we begin that walk towards Resurrection Sunday. I pray all along the way we will hear the still small voice speaking into our hearts. We want to stop. That's hard. Would you help us stop? Would you help us look? Be aware of what's around us. And would you help us listen and hear your voice during this time? In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We invite you as the Spirit leads you, just come to the table, take the cup of bread, return to your seat, and then we'll receive it together. God bless you as you come. Be still and know that I am God. 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 Be
the apostle, writing to the Philippians, said the following, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, that I may know him. Paul, before that, lays out everything, every advantage that he had by order of virtue of birth, race, everything else, and he said, it's not worth a thing. Count it all loss that I may know him. Pastor was talking about intimacy, that we would know him. Get my phone to work here. Then in Hebrews, he writes again, looking only at Jesus, the originator and perfecter of the faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. As we go through this season, if you look at your journal, it says the journey to the cross. It's a journey. And as we go through this season, I think there are two things that God will work with us on, if we'll allow and if we'll listen. One is, yeah, those things that we need to get past, those things that have tripped us up or have been a thorn in our flesh, whatever you want to use to describe it. Yeah, let's, we want, let's move on. Let's grow up if that's what it is. But there's something else. I believe he would very much like to give you a glimpse of the joy that's been set before you. That's how you overcome when you get that glimpse of the joy that's set before you. So as we go and as we start this, let it, let's, yes, be open and listen and stop and look. And let's look for two things. What are you convicting me on, Lord? What are you speaking to me? And two, is there a glimpse that I can have of that joy? Amen? I'm going to pray for you. Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for this season. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of life, this incredible gift you have given us. Help us, Father, not to take it for granted. Help us not to take your fellowship, your friendship, your closeness, your presence. Help us not to take that for granted, but to enjoy it, to listen, to be changed in your presence. As we go through this season, we trust you for that. We believe you for that. I ask you, Father, to bless your people. Bless them with your word, with your presence, by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I believe Kenny and Linda are going to be out with a candle. Uh, we're going to go out the south door. Okay, out at the south door. That's that way. Um, as you go by, whatever you've written, light it on fire. Drop it in the bucket, please. Nowhere else. In the bucket. And let's see, see what kind of what great things, great things God does in all our lives this season. Amen. God bless.